pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God, look at everybody here. Stand up for our rights. That's what we have to do. Stand up for our rights. Doesn't mean be, be stupid. Have knowledge. Be safe. Okay? We know it's out there. There is a disease. And it is killing people. So we have to be smart about that. Yes, we all want to get back to work. We want to get back to normality in life. Let me open up, up in a word of prayer because I know uh, there's other people that are going to share and I don't want to step over that. Everybody, please bow their heads and just lift their hearts up to God. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you today, Lord, on this glorious, beautiful day that you have given to us. The sun is shining, and you are upon us, dear Lord. Bless each and every one of us here, O oh Father God, and just protect us from the evil of this world, from the disease, from the sickness, from the virus, from things that are attacking us mentally, physically, and spiritually, O oh Lord. Bless us, Father God. Let us come together as one. And let us love one another as you love us. You say, love you. The first commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Let us forgive each other, God, as you have forgiven us. And just bless this day and bless all the speakers that are coming up after me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen.
maybe some of you know me from Facebook. Some of you, I have a few of my friends here. Uh, I've been going back and forth to India for the last five years. I've been there five times, six months at a time. Two years ago, I started a church there called Life Ministries. And I married a beautiful Indian woman named Jenny Fidelli to this day. I've been trying to get her back into the States and the papers were going through, but because of this pandemic, everything stopped. So I'm here alone in my apartment by myself. I had to quarantine myself for 14 days before I even came out of the house. Okay, because I, did, I wasn't worried about myself so much, even though I'm on the line, I'm a lung cancer survivor, 9-11 first responder, okay? <laughs> give that praise to God, don't give it to me, because I wouldn't be here speaking if it wasn't because of my Lord and Savior, okay? But I, I have COPD, I have emphysema, so I am on the line, but I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid, because I'm smart. Keep yourself in shape, take care of yourself. All right, physically, mentally, spiritually, eat right, sleep right, all right, be cleansing. Cleansingliness is very important. Anyway, I'm in India during this pandemic when it broke out. Hey, Joe, and we're in Travis. I was not allowed out of my apartment. The ends of Victory Thank Boulevard two balconies where I by lived. the West Shore. Because any foreign is caught Come in the street, join us. they would throw into a quarantine. And I wouldn't want to get thrown as a quarantine in India because I've been to the hospitals there. We are blessed as a country what we have, to tell you the truth. This country is blessed. That's why we came here, because it's free, because it's the land of the free. And we have the First Amendment. And we should never have that taken away from us. If they take that away from us, they take everything. Don't let them take that away. Enough is enough. Can I hear you say it? Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Well, I'm back. And I just ask everybody to forgive your name. Even the people that are against us now for what we're doing here, pray for them. It says in the scriptures, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute. God is with us and he's standing with us right now. And we're standing up for our rights as American citizens. I'm second generation here. My father was born. Hi, Joe. We're on Travis I Avenue. I mean, Victory away. Boulevard in Travis. I'm, I'm sorry. Kind of Come join us. It's I'm a big a open New York rally. <laughs> Sam Pirazzola is here. Scott Lobato is okay. here. Yes, a lot of press yes, are here. And when I was three years old, I had pneumonia. Okay? But I'm still here alive. Victory alone. Boulevard in Travis. Too. By the West Shore. Let's support each other. Be there for each other. And love each other most of all. Thank you very so much for listening to me. God bless everybody.
This isn't about the virus, people. This stopped being about the virus a long time ago. Do you remember being told that we were going to go back to work in March? Do you remember being told we were going to go back to work in the middle of March? Do you remember being told we were going to go back to work in April? Do you remember being told that we were going to go back to work after they flattened the curve? Is the curve flattened? Yes. Yes. So why aren't we back to work? So, what we're faced with today, you and I, is an interesting situation. Because Il Duce, for those of you that are of my generation, you know who Il Duce was. It was Mussolini for the younger ones. Ran a fascist government in Italy in the 20s. Has proclaimed that we can't go back to work until his 12 markers are met. Well, there's a problem with those 12 markers. He says they're scientifically designed by doctors and epidemiologists, and those markers have to be hit before it's safe for us. So are you telling me that the essential workers that are digging ditches and doing sewer work and repairing sidewalks for the city of New York are not safe, but if I go to work and I do a sidewalk, I'm not safe, but they are safe, right? Right, because they work for the city. So they have this magic community. They can't work, they can work rather, but you and I that do the same trades, we can't work. Not only can we not work, they want to fine us out of business. Has anybody here had a visit on their job site from DOB or DOT? Okay, great. So, what you all should know and maybe don't know, when they showed up on my job site, they don't tell you here's a $200 fine. They give you a five or a 10 thousand dollar fine so in their infinite wisdom i'm getting punished to put food on the table for my family you're not allowed to pay your bills they want you to suffer why because then we become wards of the state i don't want a handout i want to work what do you want? You want to work? What do you want? What do you want? Our Bill of Rights has a 14th Amendment. There are several codices to the 14th Amendment. Men that are much wiser can make than me can explain it much better than I can. Our legislature has sold us out. They did. They have sold us out. Because they have given El Duce the right to suspend our. Bill of Rights. Where are our religious leaders? Where are our priests and rabbis and mothers? Why did they allow, why did they not stand up for us? Why did they say this is not okay? You can't tell my people not to come to service. We have a, we have a right. We have a God-given right in our Constitution. You do not have the right to tell me you're right. those religious leaders standing up for us. See, I feel, listen, I'm going to pay the price for what I'm doing today, and I get that, and I'm willing to do that for you, for us, for this island, for this city, for this state. I'm willing to pay that price. The point is that there is no retribution for religious leaders. 
they can stand up to the government without the fear of retribution. They should be taking our back. They should be having this microphone. They should be telling this governor, put these people back to work. They deserve to feed their families. They deserve to keep what they work hard for all their lives. We're fortunate to have some great speakers here today. I'm just the one on my back.
I have my phone calls being forwarded, I have my website, I have everything happening. Business is pretty much at a standstill because the media is driving everybody crazy. There's probably not one thing that we have been told of how to stay safe that hasn't been contradicted. 66% of people, Cuomo is telling us, are, in, are, are leading in the infections, but they've been self-isolated. It's insane. Don't go outside. Go outside. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. So it really boils down to what your mother told you is what I come to. You know, if someone is sick, behave responsibly. Don't go and infect others. You know, one of the times I had a school board meeting and I met a deputy chancellor from the DOE. She comes up, she gives me a hug, she shakes my hand. I say, oh, hi, how you doing? She goes, oh, I have this terrible cold. I'm like, what are you freaking kidding me? Two days later, I have a terrible cold, right? So we know how to behave responsibly. And that's basically it. There's no reason that a clothing store, a bookstore, a furniture store cannot behave as yes. responsibly as Costco, yes. as Lowe's, as Walmart. Right. That's bullshit. That's right. That's right. That's what it comes down to. Bullshit. People bullshit. need to go back to work. Yes. And that's the bottom line. And just the, so the one story I wanted to tell you was the first day that I was going to have office hours for two hours before I left. I had a change of clothes and I got a plastic bag and I put it in the bathroom downstairs. There's a you know, bathroom and a shower. My wife says, what are you doing? I said, well, when I come home, I want to get changed. You know, I want to take a shower. I want to put all these clothes in a plastic bag and I want to wash them. All right. I come home. I walk in the house. I wash my hands. I said, she says, what are you doing? I said, well, you know, she says, you're not going to take a shower. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. You walk in my office. There's a rope. You don't get any more than three or four feet. Why are you here? You have to have an appointment to be here. Okay, you want to see the doctor? It's one-to-one -one service. You go see the doctor. If the next patient comes in who has an appointment and wants to see the doctor, please have a seat on the bench outside. You're here to see the optician? Okay, come on in and see the optician. If the optician is busy, please have a seat outside. There is no reason that any business cannot follow safe protocols. Exactly. So that's what I wanted to come here and share with you guys today. Thank you very much. God bless America. What, uh, uh, there's one other thing that really pisses me off. Okay? What pisses me off? I'm glad you asked that question. The, the premise that just because we want to get back to work, we don't care about anybody else. Count them. Okay? So let's recognize right now that there's an article in the Advance, almost a thousand of our grandmothers, no. grandfathers, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters have died on Staten Island. I think Steve, so actually, I'm not sure. I don't let's even know have him. a moment of silence I know his name, for, our fellow, know him. for our fellow Irish who perished and are going through this. If he could speak. I think it's the guy in the gold, the gold t-shirt up there. It's definitely a very sad thing that we're going through. People are talking about waves. There's going to be a second wave. There's going to be a third wave. If we haven't cured the common cold, if we haven't cured HIV, if we haven't cured so many of these other viruses, why are we waiting for a cure to be able to go back to work? So I really think it's insulting that when I say we want to get back to work or I want to get back to work, it's because I don't care about everybody else who's died. I do care about everybody else who's died. But as my mother used to say, life is for the living. Okay? And there are people who are struggling and they can't put their food on the table. They can't take care of their kids. And we also have to focus on this. So again, thank you very much for coming, Steve. Thank you, thank you so much.
I just thank you and bless you for being here. But I got to say thanks to Pro Show and these two guys are just absolutely great. They gave them their Saturday to be here. I got to say thank you to my buddy Teddy who got on me one night when I was like completely beaten to death. And Teddy got me on the phone and just cranked me up so that I was up to here and I was like, yeah! Thank you, Teddy. John's Catering, who was willing to come out today for what is not really a large event by their standards. Amen, brother. Uh, to come out today so that we have food and drink. Thank you very much. And in the back, you're going to see a row of trucks. My, Joe, my buddy Joey came out, advanced. God bless him. Let's go. I want to thank all my truckies. Social distancing. We have uh, Big Brothers watching. So we're going to play COVID Jeopardy. Everybody ready? COVID Jeopardy. Give me a name. Give me a title of the band. Tugboat! Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. One at a time. Real estate. Great. Tell me what you want to do. You want to show a house? You want to list a house? You want to do a closing? Tell me what you want to do. Okay, we don't have time for it. I'm going to give you a few. I'm going to give you a few. We want to go list the house. So we're going to have a conversation with the homeowner before we go in. We're going to ask the way everybody is asked. Have you had this virus? Do you have a fever? All the questions that everybody asks us. Will you be home? We can do this electronically. I don't have to come to your house to sign you up. I do have to come to take pictures, but you don't have to be there for that. I want to show you house. Could you give me an hour when you're not going to be home? Because the clients that I'm bringing to you will be masked. They will be wet. We will cure out our hands. And we will agree that they're not going to touch anyone. Have I missed anything so far? Is everybody still safe? Yes. yes. Does that put you back to work? Yes. What's the problem? <laughs> I'll tell you when it became, when I knew it became political. When I was watching, and I gotta tell you, this is kind of a cute story because my sister and I got by side of the Calls me up on the phone one day, she says, Stephen, I can't believe I'm gonna say this. You're not gonna believe that I'm gonna say this. But I actually watched Cuomo on TV his very first day. And she says, he really made sense. He really, I really, he really did a great job. And then, oh, really? But then the second day, and the third day, and the fourth day, and then the next phone call came. I'm not going to tell you what she said on that phone call, but she wasn't happy with what she was hearing. And neither was I. I need 10,000 more vents. I need 5,000 more vents. I need 50,000 more of this. I need 20,000 more of that. So what does our president do? Turns heaven and earth upside down.
on the on the boat. Right. They got 2,500 beds in jail. Right. They used 178, 200 beds on the boat. Right. They used 200 beds in Jacob Chavez. And I'm saying to myself, what's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture? Why is this man, this man, Bill Duce, why is he sending the sickest of the sick to be amongst the most vulnerable of the most vulnerable? Right. That's why New York has a death rate of 22,000 and Florida has a rate of 2,000. That's right. Because what did the governor in Florida do? Nursing homes. He took care of his nursing homes. That's right. His elderly. What did this government do? He auditioned to be vice president for Uncle Joe. That's all this is about. Like this isn't a partisan argument. I'm just going to ask you to look, look at some stuff. Do some subscribe and research when you get home. And look at the states that are, have the most aggressive lockdown. All blue. Look at the states All with the highest blue. death rates. And listen to those governors. And tell me if it doesn't sound like they're auditioning for the number two job in Washington. Oh, yeah. Would you be the number one job? <laughs> So tell me this isn't about money. Tell me this isn't about putting this president's back to the wall saying, this virus bankrupted us. This virus didn't bankrupt you. You bankrupted the United States, the New York State, when you decided to pay for colleges for everybody. That's right. When you decided to get people to work with citizens, that's what you can't want to do. We have the money. We have the money. It's not my fucking business. Unfortunately, not everybody in this parking lot will be able to do that. But I'm going to tell you that those of us that are able to stay in business are going to pay a hefty price. The hangover from the spending on this virus is going to last for our generations. The hole that they're digging now daily gets deeper and deeper in New York City. And from the New York Times, don't trust me, $12 billion in income. Would it be? Tell me how these cops are gonna get paid next year. Tell me how these firemen are gonna get paid. They get paid. Either way, but all of a sudden they're gonna put the presidents back to the wall because they don't have the money to pay these men and women. And it's not fair. It's not right. The fact that they decided to spend, spend their future frivolously is now my problem. It's now your problem. And it's not okay. Right. What about the pensions? Story for another day. <laughs> so, again, I'm just here to do warm up. I'll be back. I'm going to introduce to you a very dear friend that I've known for over 30 years. For many of you, she needs no introduction. But she's one of the few people on the face of this planet that no matter what I call her, or no matter what crazy idea I have, no matter what windmill I want to tilt that, no matter who I want to go after next, she's there to take my call and either get me off the ledge or get behind me and push me forward. She's the former community board president. I want to introduce Leticia Romaro.
Fazio, who have been drawing down a paycheck every two weeks since this pandemic started, before this pandemic started, while they were bankrupting our city and state, they have been pay taking down a paycheck every two weeks. And you want to know what? Steve said it. They never, ever were responsible for creating one job. They never, ever have been responsible for creating wealth. They've never been responsible for helping a family send their child to college with money that they sunk into their business to create a job to create a salary. Never, because they came from college to community organizing or to government, and that's where they sit. And ladies and gentlemen, they are the ones that are telling us what we can do for our business. How is that even possible? It shouldn't be. You know, I've, I've done a lot of things in my life and I've come through a lot of tragedies and I was in leadership during 9-11 and I was in the Battery Park City Authority, which is a government agency. And do you know what Governor Pataki did following 9-11? Do you know what we all did following 9-11 to get the economy back? Because people from all over the world were saying New York, New York City can never recover, right? We're there, it's unsafe. We're gonna get a bomb dropped on us. Terrorists are gonna attack. It's unsafe. The way we handled that tragedy was we opened everything up and we got everybody back to work. And that's what has to happen here. That's what has to happen here. And I'm tired of hearing from people that we are in this together. No, we're not. If one more celebrity sits in their mansion next to their pool and their baby grand piano and says we're in this together, I'm going to puke. We're not in this together. You're not in this with me. You have your paychecks. You never put your life savings on the line to create a job for someone else. How, yeah, Pelosi, Pelosi standing in front of a $40,000 refrigeration system showing us $1,000 worth of ice cream says, we are going to be in this together. And you want to know what the worst is? When it was time to pass the stimulus package to help small businesses, she took the week off. She took the week off. But now she rushed back to do to create a three trillion dollar stimulus bill that mentions cannabis 68 times. What's that about? What's that about? And she held up our bill to fund the Kennedy Center. What's that about? You know what that's about? Politics, ladies and gentlemen. We passed the point of this virus being about saving each other. It has now become political and people are using it as a political weapon. And this is sinful. We're in our ninth week and yesterday the governor told us we need four more weeks. Four more weeks of this. How many of you have enough savings to get four more weeks of this? What? No, you don't? You think the movie stars are going to give us their money? You think the, the, the governors are going to give us their money? Can you survive four more weeks of this? Or shit, can your employees survive four more weeks of not working? Listen, here's the fact. The construction industry, and I know there's a lot of people here from the construction industry. Raise your hand if you're from the construction industry. All right. The construction industry in 2018 was the third highest economic driver in the state of New York. We came in fifth in the United States. Fifth. You should all be proud of that. By your very nature, you wear PPE because you have to observe safety standards that OSHA puts down for us in order to do your job. You don't work on top of each other. Electricians don't work over plumbers. Glaciers don't work over electricians. You all work safe and you work separate. And in New York, to say that we can build 
a 20-story tower for affordable housing where hundreds of men and women are on the job. But we can't have one of you home contractors go in and finish a job that you started for a family that's now living without a bathroom or a kitchen or whatever. It's inconsistent and capricious. What is this all about for real, people? You've got to ask yourself about that. So here's my challenge. I'm not going to take much longer. Steve said a lot. Uh, we, uh, Sam said the rest. I'm just here to say this. I know what it is to be a part of an emergency team that's recovering. We recovered the lower Manhattan area and we need a plan. The plan is not just keeping people safe from the virus. The plan is how are you going to get business back on track? Because, you know, the thing is, if we're in this together, then I challenge all of those elected officials that are taking down a paycheck every two weeks to put it in a pot and pay all the rest of us that are staying home. They're not in it together. They get their paycheck. And they don't even know what the hell they're doing because they never created a job. They never grew the economy. Absolutely not. So, what good is it if we save everybody from the virus, if we let them all starve to death. That's not what this is about. We need to say enough is enough. We're American citizens. We are we're following the American dream. We are creating jobs. We are giving to the economy. And we have had enough. We want to get back to work. Back to work. Where are we going to go? Back to work. with your ridiculous taxes, with your onerous regulations, we adapted every single time. And we stayed here in New York. And we gave our blood. And we gave our sweat. And we gave our tears. And now, now, this is the one that we're not going to take. This is the one where we say enough. We did it all. We went without paychecks so our employees could have theirs. We know what it's like. You don't. We're tired of listening to you because you don't know what you're doing. Now it's time to listen to us. Thank you. God bless you all. <clears throat> all right, guys. Till later. I pretty much killed my battery on my phone. Got to go recharge. Signing out from Travis, Staten Island. And he doesn't want me to say his name. He's one of those kind of people. Oh, Hi, God, William. We would not See you later. Facility.